Hi, welcome to Robot Todd, issue 2, page 17. My name is Farrell. Let's do this. Uh, here you can see me uh, thumbnailing. I, I do these thumbnails on a separate page here and kind of get ideas for future pages and just sort of like how I want the page to look. I, uh, I, the, the idea that I got on this one was, uh, well, there's a couple things, but the, uh, just during the thumbnail process, I thought of drawing that little fox above, it, above Todd's head with the question mark around him. Um, you can see there's kind of like a sort of a simple cartoony version of it that uh, got a little less simplified as I penciled it. <laughs> um, Later on, I, I added some other things. I actually scanned this page once it was done and looked at it on the computer and was like, uh, I should add some more stuff. So I ended up going going back in, which after I scanned it, which I don't normally do, and then rescanned it. But um, yeah, the biggest challenge at first, again, was that whale shark creature for me is uh, drawing it. Uh, I, I redrew it a few times in that first panel. Just trying to get it to look like it's receding, like it's going off into the distance, you know, it's like you can see it's kind of like curved there at first. And then I erased it and redrew it and erased it and redrew it. And uh, the end result, I, you know, I'm pretty happy with. I feel like it, you kind of get the sense from like the previous page, like how big it is. And then it's kind of going off in the distance. And I wanted the, those like, you know, the bubbles is like, you know, that the idea of him like, sucking in water through the front and then expelling it through the back and then sort of like propels it along. Uh, yeah, I was like, redrew those a lot too, like the little bubbles and the way it was kind of coming out. And uh, that was probably like the part that got the muddiest for me when I painted it. And I w went in with some, with some opaque white and uh, tried to, you know, clean it up a bit. But, you know, I think it came out okay at the end. Um, inking this too... Uh, I ink with one of those Faber Castile pit pens. All the descriptions, all the stuff, materials that I use, and everything's in the. It'll be in the description in the video if you want to check that out. If you're curious, um, but I, I was trying to decide what I wanted to leave pencil and just watercolor on top of versus inking. Normally, I just ink the char the foreground characters, but because one of the characters in this the prominent characters in this page is this ghost character. I thought, like, well, I'll just watercolor her, uh, maybe Ink Robot Todd in the first panel and the whale creature. But in the third panel, uh, I didn't really want to ink the fox character because it's like this, like, thought, you know, that he's having. Um, I originally had it written out in the script of, like, which way do my friends go? And then I thought, like, oh, I'll just have him be thinking oh which because the fox is sort of like their guide like have him just be thinking about the fox with a question mark around it and like the reader gets the idea so here i am inking the letters with the faber castile pit pen size f and then i got the idea um i, I read this uh i have a the, a copy of t.s Eliot's the wasteland and uh the love song of j alfred proof rock and i've actually used a line from Love Song of Jail for Proof Rock and the Wrenchies. I I um I, I did like a, a take different take on it though. I didn't use the exact line. I sort of added my own <laughs> thing about kids listening to illegal radios rather than speaking of Michelangelo. But um I I I opened up this book for the past like week on the same exact line about I want to be like uh, a crab scuttling across the ocean floor or something like that. Um, I should have been a pair of ragged claws going across the floors of silent seas. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I kept seeing that line, and then um, it just kind of occurred to me the morning that I drew this, of like, oh, I should add that line to the last panel because I don't have him saying anything there other than I, I think maybe I thought about him saying, like, oh, I'm dizzy or, you know, oh, where, where are my friends or something like that. But I thought it might be kind of nice just him to kind of pull this out of his memory banks from you know like because his memory has like been wiped like at the beginning of the series he doesn't remember anything but he still know, knows how to like talk and you know uh different you know function and stuff basically so there's stuff very deep in his subconscious or whatever um and i thought it'd be fun just to kind of it, it seemed like applicable to the situation you know that he's was in the water 
And then it just kind of like occurs to him this line and it kind of reflects that I just kept seeing this line like for the past week or so every morning. Um, so that was, I don't know, kind of like a fun thing for me to, to put in there. And I might have him say something on the next page of like, where did that come from? Or, you know, what, what was that? But uh, I might not either. I don't know. Uh, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, I guess. A couple other things about the inking uh, where I, I guess ideas that I got while I was thumbnailing was that I wanted the bottom half of Robot Todd to be visible underwater, but I still wanted his head to be kind of big. So I did that kind of weird sort of forced perspective, like, oh, you can kind of see, just kind of seeing the water, the light, you know, sort of warping him, the water sort of warping him into this sort of little small body. <laughs> and also, too, I'm kind of like obsessed with getting the whole figure in every panel. So uh, I thought it, you know, was, was kind of, you know, like interesting, like visual effect or something. And uh, the other thing, too, is that when he was walking in the last panel, you can see there it is, uh, that I wanted him to be kind of kicking up this dirt and mud. So I thought, okay, I will, I'll ink robot Todd in the last panel except for his feet that are in the mud you know in the sort of silt and the dust that he's kicking up in the up from the ocean floor and uh actually started to ink his his foot and you know just because a lot of times I'll you know when I'm inking I, I stop thinking as much you know I'd you know listening to like an audiobook or something and I just like kind of go on automatic pilot and just be like, I'm making lines. And so I started to ink his foot after I told myself I wasn't going to do it. You know, it's like, damn it. Uh, so I, I, uh, I had to stop myself. And then uh, later when I was watercoloring, I went over with some opaque white over that foot and then left his other foot blank. So I don't know if you can, you can tell in the finished result of like, oh, I accidentally started inking that, but... Um, I mean, I think it came out okay. It, you know, it's not a big deal, whatever. That's what, I guess, white paint is for. But uh, speaking of paint here, I'm in the watercolor process uh, section of the video. And um, I, again, using that liquid watercolor for the blue, the uh, aqua blue that I've been using for the uh, all the subterranean levels and, you know, all the underwater scenes and everything been pretty handy it's just like I just kind of drop some from an eyedropper in a jar and uh, add some water and get to the right consistency and I, I it actually I, I drop some in some cups too and when that dries I can kind of just apply it to the water you know do get the right mixture and then do layers you know and actually ended up um, I think I might have mentioned this already but I ended up uh, going over the whole thing, you know, being finished with it, and then uh, scanning it, and then seeing it on the computer all scanned, and being like, you know what, that doesn't really look 100% like where I want it, and um, I mean, I, they, they never do, but I felt like I could get away with one more session where I'd go in and, uh, you know, punch up a lot of the blues, and then also the sky, uh, the background, and the, the last two panels, I, I just felt like, especially the last panel, I felt like it kind of needed some some orange clouds. I looked at the cover that I did for issue one, and it has these it had that same kind of gray-green sky, but there was these orange clouds in the, uh, in the background as well. And, um, yeah, I just went in after after I scanned it, which is something I don't normally do. I normally, once I scanned it, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm finished with it. But, um, here you can see that's, this is the first version of it with just the blank skies and then adding the, the orange clouds. And then I punched up the blues and touched up a bunch of stuff, the Fox and everything. So that's, uh, pretty much the finish there. Um, you can see that finish page and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, move, moving on to the next one. I have a Patreon if you want to check that out. And, oh, yeah, so we got this book, Monster Us. It's a 64-page book. There's a crowdfunder. Um, you can see it's like me and my partner, Soph, we did all these monster drawings, and we're trying to get it out for this permanent damage show. And we paid for the printing already, but if you want to order a copy, we'll send it to you, or you can pick it up at the show. Link's in the description. There's some of my other books that I'll have there. Uh, mentioned before, I do have a Patreon to sell original art at the Beguiling. Thanks for watching. Bye.